What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we're going to take an early look at our top 12 rankings for the wide receiver position for the 2024 fantasy football season. So make sure to tune in. If you enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. Let us hear in the comment section if you agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have. We'll do our best to answer them all. But with that being said, let's get into it. As you can see, we've got our rankings and our tiers pulled up. Quick note, this is PPR based. Uh, so keep that in mind. And then obviously, you know, it's still May. It's still early. Things will change as we get to July, August, September. We're going to update these lists then as well to see the differences. Uh, but either way, uh, I think it's a very valuable exercise. So uh, without further ado, kinking it off, we've got CeeDee Lamb at the 101 spot, uh, the top name in our tier one category. And I think the other thing worth mentioning is that our tier one category is a little bit larger than some others. I think typically you see guys like Lamb, uh, Jefferson Hill, Jamar Chase as the four names in the tier one category. I think it's I think it's deeper. I do. Uh, and I think that uh, probably the tier one category this year is deeper than it potentially ever been in recent memory. So CeeDee Lamb comes in at the number one spot for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, he proved last year that he can uh, carry your team. He can be the focal point of his offense. And I do think that uh, when you look at his quarterback compared to the other top six wide receivers and who's throwing them the football, I think Dak Prescott is a little bit more consistent, uh, a notch above maybe like a Tua. He's better than the quarterback situation the Vikings have. Uh, he doesn't have as many injury questions as a Joe Burrow. I think he is on par a little bit better than Jared Goff. So again, uh, that's why I have CeeDee Lamb there. I think the other name that probably would be the most popular at the 101 uh, is Tyree Kill of the Miami Dolphins, who I have at number two. Uh, I mean, he's a home run hitter. He's the definition of a home run hitter. Uh, he has probably the highest upside out of any wide receiver in fantasy football. So that's why I understand if you have him at the number one spot. I personally have him at the number two spot because I think C.D. Lamb can be a little bit more consistent uh, and won't have as many, maybe let's say low double digit, uh, scoring games. And again, that's not Tyreek Hill's fault. I think a lot of that is sometimes how he's utilized, but also Jalen Waddle is there. Jalen Waddle is no slouch. The only reason, you know, Waddle isn't like a top 10 or top 12 wide receiver household name is because Tyreek Hill is there. And, uh, there's going to be weeks where Jalen Waddle takes away some of that production from Tyreek, but either way, uh, Tyreek is in the conversation as the top overall fantasy wide receiver. So uh, it's really nitpicking. But where we can kind of go ahead and say, okay, there's a little bit more separation, comes in at number three. And I think that's with Justin Jefferson. I do have Jefferson still at the number three spot, even without Kirk Cousins, uh, because I do think he will still be uber targeted. But going from Kirk Cousins to now Sam Darnold or J.J. McCarthy, that's a drop-off. And say what you will about Kirk Cousins, but for fantasy purposes, he was a good fantasy quarterback. He was a great stat sheet stuffer. And because of that, I think that this Minnesota offense will miss him in that department. And for what it's worth, I actually think that if you're hoping for one of these quarterbacks to win out, I think it's Sam Darnold. To me, he is somebody that's going to air out the football more and I think he precipitates a higher upside for Justin Jefferson. But basically, I think the takeaway is that with Jefferson, the high upside, um, the high quantity of those high upside games as well is going to diminish. Uh, I still think that he's going to have a high floor because of the elite talent. But Justin Jefferson, no longer uh, the top overall wide receiver. If Kirk Cousins was still there then yes, uh, I would say he'd be at the number one spot. Uh, next up, we go Jamar Chase. And this is really, really close for me between Jamar and Amon Ross St. Brown. I really like Amon Ross St. Brown. And I think that if you had him above Jamar Chase, I would have no issues with it. The reason I have Chase slightly above him is because I think that now he's going to be a little bit more of a focal point of the Bengals. There's no more Tyler Boyd. So like it's him and T. Higgins. And if we're talking about disappearing acts, T. Higgins, man, 
He does a great job of disappearing sometimes. So uh, Jamar Chase is that dude. And as long as Joe Burrow stays healthy, like Jamar Chase, there's no reason why he should be getting less than 10 targets per game. So uh, I think Jamar Chase is going to benefit from, you know, potentially uh, having less guys to contend with because Tyler Boyd, say what you will about him. He was really good. Uh, he was underappreciated because, you know, the Bengals still had Chase and Higgins, but Tyler Boyd could go ahead and still outproduce some of those guys on any given week. Uh, but I will put Chase above Amon Ross St. Brown primarily because of the guys that he has to contend with. Because when you go with the Detroit Lions and you go down the list of weapons that they have, you go uh, Sam Laporta, you've got DeAndre Swift, you've got David Montgomery. Uh, at the other wide receiver position, we could potentially see, I think Jameson Williams, uh, finally break out. We'll see, but considering how much other, uh, options there are on that offense, it makes what Amon Ross St. Brown does, uh, even that much more impressive. I, I think he's going to be great once again. And, you know, as long as Jared Goff is slinging the rock over there and they've got that ballsy offense, uh, I'm not really all that worried about Amon Ross St. Brown. And then number six, rounding out our tier one group, I've got Garrett Wilson of the New York Jets. And now, yes, Garrett Wilson burned you last year, but it's not through uh, any fault of his own. It's because Aaron Rodgers went down in the first minute of, of week one, and the Jets season was doomed immediately afterwards. Like, there were some games where, you know, Wilson was able to put together decent performances, and he was able to salvage... Uh, you know, a couple of uh, higher notch wide receiver finishes, but that's because he played out of his mind and or because like he got a lot of dink and dump passes. Uh, he is going to bounce back big time this year. And I do think him and Aaron Rodgers are going to be a league winning competition. I absolutely love Gary Wilson. I have no problem drafting him in the first round. Next, we kind of transition to our tier two list. And here, basically, I think these guys, either they're a little bit more better suited for standard format leagues, I think they're, they're, they're going to have more consistency issues, and or I think they're a little bit older uh, or a little bit less proven. And we start with A.J. Brown, com who comes in at number seven. And with A.J. Brown, I do think that he's somebody that is better suited in standard formats. He has to contend with Devonta Smith. Uh, Dallas Goddard is there. You've got Saquon Barkley there now. Uh, you know, the Eagles like to run the football and we've seen AJ Brown. Yes, absolutely blow up, but we've also seen him disappear. So for that reason, I think that AJ Brown does belong in this category. Uh, he's very, very talented, but again, just know with AJ Brown, you're going to get weeks where he finishes outside of a top 20 wide receiver. Like it, it will just happen. Um, but again, he does have the high upside. Next, we go to number eight, and that is Puka Nakua of the LA Rams, the rookie sensation of last year. And we said to draft this guy last year, and boy, did that pay off. Now, a lot of that, admittedly, had to do with Cooper Cup not being there for the entirety of the season. But even when Cooper Cup was there, Puka Nakua was still showing out, and he was outproducing Cup. Now, I do think Cup wasn't at 100%. So let's keep that in mind. But as long as Matthew Stafford is there, I'm not all too worried about Puka Nakua and or Cooper Cup, honestly. I do think Puka is a little bit younger, uh, doesn't have as many, you know, injury question marks as Cooper Cup. So I do like him, but I will say if you're expecting a performance like you got from him last year, temper those expectations. I honestly think that out of all the wide receivers that we've listed so far, he probably has the highest likelihood of going down my future rankings because, you know, if there's somebody that I think could disappoint and have uh, a fall from grace type of situation compared to last year, I could see it being him. Now, again, I know he set the rookie records for wide receivers, but it, we just don't know. Uh, I think Cooper Cup isn't going away. I think that, you know... <laughs> Matthew Stafford is a sneeze away from missing a couple of games. Uh, the rushing attack there can also get it going. So uh, there's a lot of factors, but 
I am still excited about Puka Nakua. Then at number nine, we have got Drake London of the Atlanta Falcons. And this has everything to do with the addition of Kirk Cousins. As you can tell, I'm probably a little bit more bullish on Drake London. Uh, and that's because, as I mentioned before, Kirk Cousins is an extremely fantasy friendly quarterback. But I will say that London, similar to Puka Nakua, could be somebody that goes down these rankings depending on the rehab of Kirk Cousins and his Achilles. Because if we get to August and the news is that he is still questionable, iffy for week one, that he might start out on the pup, then Drake London, while Cousins is not there, I'm going to be hard pressed to have him as a wide receiver one. Uh, yes, Michael Penix is there, which does make the situation a little bit better. But again, Kirk Cousins uh, and Penix, not quite in the same conversation. But I do think the new head coaches there will help uh, out this offense. London is clearly the number one wide receiver. Last year, he had some really good performances uh, with Ritter at quarterback. So uh, I like the situation for London. Uh, and I think the Atlanta Falcons are going to force feed him the football, especially when Kirk Cousins is under center. And then rounding out our tier two group, Devontae Adams. Uh, Adams, I am conflicted with him again because the talent is there. Now, from an age perspective, he's one of the older guys on this list. And honestly, this could be one of his final years of fantasy relevance. Wouldn't shock me. Uh, but I really don't like the quarterback situation in Las Vegas. They didn't really upgrade via the draft. Like free agency, they said, okay, we're going to go with Gardner Minshew. And like, that's about it. So I don't get me wrong. I think Minshew is better than what they had before. Uh, I am a little bit worried how Devontae Adams was utilized last year. Like there were weeks when he was the wide receiver two or the wide receiver three on that team. Um, but Talent-wise, he should be the number one guy. Like, I understand why he's frustrated. I do think Minshew, like we saw Minshew make, uh, for the most part, Michael Pittman a wide receiver one last year. I think Devontae Adams can get back into our good graces with Minshew uh, at quarterback. He He's the best wide receiver on that team, despite what uh, somebody like a Jacoby Myers might have done last year. Next, we go to our tier three category, and this is where I think we get to some less dominant guys where we get to probably we're not going to see too many 30 plus performances from them, uh, but they will still, especially in PPR formats, uh, be very, very good. And coming at number 11, I mentioned him before, Michael Pittman, he had his breakout season uh, last year. And now it's going to be Anthony Richardson for the entirety of the year. I think that Pittman is still the number one wide receiver here. Yes, they've got some really good weapons with Josh Downs, with Adonai Mitchell. Uh, but Pittman is the guy. He just got paid big time. And I think that as long as Anthony Richardson stays healthy, he will be the main uh, target for that offense uh, and I like that situation. I will say, I think he's going to have a little bit lower upside with Richardson compared to Minshew. Uh, I think Richardson is going to look to run the football more, but still Pittman should be the primary weapon for him. And then rounding out our list at number 12, we've got Chris Olave of the New Orleans Saints. I think, you know, at this point we could have gone with a lot of different names, uh, but I'm looking at talent and I think Chris Olave is extremely, extremely talented. Michael Thomas also no longer on the Saints, so that's going to free up some opportunities. I think Alvin Kamara isn't utilized as much uh, as a pass catcher as he should be. The biggest question mark for Chris Olave will be Derek Carr. Can Derek Carr figure it out? Can he be like serviceable enough to like be able to put together you know, uh, well, for example, Gardner, Gardner Minshew type of success for his wide receivers. Like, I feel like that should be a pretty low bar, but uh, that's what we're talking about here. Um, and I feel like he can do that. Chris Olave is the most experienced guy on that offense. He's extremely talented. You know, a couple guys that I considered here for this spot, 
you know, maybe a Brendan Ayuk, but the 49ers continue to add pass catchers. Ricky Persall, uh, in the first round of that draft. Now there's, you know, whispers that there might be a trade on that offense. So TBD, um, you know, somebody maybe like a DJ Moore had a huge year last year, but there's so many mouths to feed in Chicago now. Keenan Allen, Roma Dunze. Um, so I am a little bit wary with that. I'm not going to have a rookie wide receiver and, you know, that's, uh, not a knock to any of those guys, but I just don't think a Malik neighbors or Marvin Harrison at this point in time. Uh, I feel more confident with them than I do some of these proven producers. It's, it's much easier to be a top 10 guy at the running back position as a rookie than, uh, a wide receiver. If you're an elite talent there. Like what we saw from, again, from Puka Nakua last year, breaking those records, that's more so an anomaly. So uh, I'm pumping the brakes on some of these rookies. I'm going with Chris Olave. I know the talent is there. Uh, I just need Derek Carr to do a little bit better. But hey, again, there's question marks here. That's why these guys are in the tier three category for a reason. Uh, But they will still nonetheless, I think, be valuable assets to your team. But with that, we wrap up this top 12 early breakdown of the wide receiver position for the 2024 fantasy football season. If you guys enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. Let us hear in the comment section. Agree, disagree, along with any other questions. In the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.